Idol of Dogs is directed by Wes Anderson. This is actually his ninth feature film. In this movie, he utilizes stop-motion animation, which he hasn't done since 2009 with Fantastic Mr. Fox. And this film takes place in the near future of Japan, where various different sicknesses infect the local dog population, which forces the government to ban all of the dogs to a remote island called Trash Island. And it is on this island where a small boy crash lands his plane to find his dog that was taken away from him to bring him back home. I've been a big fan of Wes Anderson's work for a while now. Watching his movies, he's one of the few filmmakers that you can look at every single frame and see the dedication, the work, and the care that is put into every single shot into this movie, which feels like a work of art in its own right. And it's been four years since Anderson has made a feature film, the last of which being Grand Budapest Hotel, which was my favorite movie of his. And at this point, Wes Anderson has almost become his own genre. No one really makes movies like Wes Anderson does. And with Isle of Dogs, he really doesn't change the formula up too much here. He does what he's been doing for about 20 years, which if you have been on board with, then you're sure to love this movie. And Isle of Dogs, like his other movies, have a very similar style to them. There's a lot of very symmetrical shots. There's a lot of overhead shots, a lot of profile shots, a lot of whip pans, this kind of weird obsession with maps and tape recorders. And even down to a narrative level with the story beats of this film, there are a lot of similarities to his other movies, but I don't want to get into spoiler territory. This is a formula that Wes Anderson has been sticking to for a while, and it obviously has intrigued people for this long, myself included. And it's a formula that works with these movies, and honestly, I can't imagine any other aesthetic to these films. And like Fantastic Mr. Fox, Isle of Dogs is a perfect representation of the amount of work and the effort and the love that is put into each and every one of these movies. Isle of Dogs actually has the interesting record of being the longest longest stop motion animated film of all time. And I've always had a soft spot for this type of animation, Kubo and the Two Strings being a recent installment to this genre that just astounds me of the amount of craftsmanship and the amount of dedication and sheer beauty that goes into every single frame of these movies. And Isle of Dogs is of course no exception to this. This film is gorgeous. The amount of minute expressions that these little claymation figures are able to express is just mind blowing. It's nothing short of astounding. And Isle of Dogs, like Wes Anderson's other films, has a stellar lineup of casts with some familiar faces like Bill Murray, Jeff Goldblum, Tilda Swinton, Edward Norton, Francis McDormand, and a slew of others. And they all do such a fantastic job, especially Edward Norton, who has done animated voice work before, and he has a real knack for it. He is really good in this movie. Now, when talking about this film, it's really difficult not to address the elephant in the room and something that a lot of people have been talking about, and the fact that Wes Anderson recently has come under fire again again for cultural appropriation. This film has received a wide range of criticism, the fact that some feel that this movie is culturally insensitive, that it uses Japanese culture as a backdrop, that this film has a predominantly white voice cast, and the simple fact that Wes Anderson being a white man shouldn't really venture into this territory of telling a Japanese story. He received similar criticisms when he made The Darjeeling Limited in 2007. Now, myself personally, and I do not claim to be the top authority in discussing these types of things. I don't even really think that I'm qualified to talk about these things considering that I am a white man, but for myself personally, when I was watching this film, I did not really notice anything that I thought was overtly offensive or insensitive towards Japanese culture. However, I do understand the criticism that this film just kind of uses Japanese culture as a bit of an accessory. The fact that there is not really anything about this movie that necessitates it taking place in Japan, because this movie really could have taken place anywhere. It could have taken place in Oregon, Ohio. It doesn't really matter. I will also say that I do think it is odd that Frances McDormand's entirety of her character is there just to be an interpreter. Now, she's there to tell the audience what the mayor of this fictional city is telling us because this movie doesn't really use subtitles. And I do think that it is an odd choice not to give him subtitles. In fact, I think if they would have given him subtitles, they could have avoided a lot of the problems that people are having with this movie. With that being said, I do understand why they didn't give the young boy subtitles because we are supposed to feel like the dogs feel and not be able to understand him because dogs don't understand any language. It doesn't matter if it's English or Japanese. But at the beginning of the film, there is this message that all the dogs' barks have been converted to English so we as an audience can understand them. But when I was leaving this movie, do I think that Isle of Dogs is racist? No. Do I think that there are a few improvements that could have been made upon this film to make it a bit better? Yeah. However, if someone goes to see this film and they 
do think that it's culturally insensitive and they are offended by it, then I am all ears. I am more than willing to listen and I think that they have every single right in the world to feel that way. But for myself personally, I thought that Isle of Dogs utilizes the same filmmaking that Wes Anderson has infused into all of his films to tell a story that is adorable, it's funny, and it's heartfelt. The technical achievements of the animation alone are truly miraculous, as is the voice cast that it has. As I said, if you're not a fan of Wes Anderson's style, then this is definitely not going to convert you because it is in line with almost all of the films that he has created. But if you are a fan of his work, then I think that you should go and check this film out because I do think that you will really enjoy it. So did you guys see Isle of Dogs? What did you think about it? Leave your thoughts and opinions down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you liked today's video. And if you did, you can click on the link down below and subscribe to my channel to see more movie reviews and movie related things. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.